Good morning, church. Welcome to this third segment of our worship today. My name's Dave, and I'm appointed to serve this uh, two-point charge in northern Montgomery County, Maryland. And a special welcome to you if this is your first time joining us, or if this is the only way that you connect with our uh, community. I, I do welcome you, and I hope that at some time we might be able to get acquainted. In this segment today, we're going to be giving some thought to what might be worship, and more especially, passionate worship, and even more especially, what does it look like in this, our contemporary setting? I invite you to pray with me. Gracious God, we thank you for being ever-present with us. We know that we're never alone. Your mercies have been faithful and rich. Pour out your Spirit upon us that we might do the work of your will. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Last week, we considered briefly the idea of pursuing excellence, not only as hosts, but as guests, and that was under the heading of Radical Hospitality, the first practice suggested by Robert Schnazy in his book, Five Practices of Fruitful Congregations. This season has confronted us with unprecedented challenges, to be sure. I would suggest it's also presenting us with unparalleled opportunities. During this time, we can regear and engage with renewed energy some tasks and activities which always should have been part of our focus, and perhaps we may gladly disengage from many other things that were keeping us too preoccupied, too busy. We should not squander this opportunity to begin doing better at being agents of grace and faith and hope and love as agents of the kingdom of God working for the transformation of our world. And we can begin as close as with our immediate neighbors, beside, behind, and across the street from us. How did this week go for you in trying to rethink and deepen your practice of hospitality? This week, our focus is on passionate worship. So today, we'll look first at what worship is, and then what it is to qualify it with that adjective passionate, and finally, what it might look like during this time of pandemic, when we're prevented from some of those customary worship activities. How would you describe the function of, or how would you define worship? Robert Schnazy, one of our bishops, has suggested that worship describes those times we gather deliberately, seeking to encounter God in Christ, and that the time spent provides opportunity to think less about ourselves and more about faith, and less about our own agenda and more about God's purposes and activities. He suggests that worship connects us to God and to one another and to the world around us. Does this resonate for you? How would you add to it or adjust it? And then, what is most important to you about our customary times of worship? I've known for many a time of quiet, several minutes prior to the start of our organized worship service is an absolute essential. I know others for whom being able just to visit joyfully with um, their church friends prior to the start of the service. This is something they cannot imagine doing without. And some of the former group have sometimes become quite frustrated with the latter group because of the noise of joyfully visiting with their friends, shattering the silence, jangling the nerves of those seeking the quiet time. Quiet time in God's presence becoming impossible. Now, I would suggest that neither is wrong. Both are important. As Schnazy points out, worship is a time to connect with God and to one another. It is a time 
for connections as the body of Christ. Perhaps hospitality then could be brought to bear on this. Maybe when we are again able to gather, maybe those who tend to get lost in their jovial fellowship times, maybe they could consider the needs of those who are quietly trying to have time with God prior to that worship service beginning. Maybe reserving that 10 minutes or so before the service begins as a quiet time in the sanctuary, with visiting continuing in other spaces in the church facility. Just a thought. As I've said, both of these are important parts of our organized times of worship as a group. Then, in the order of service itself, different people will prioritize different parts of it. Different aspects of the organized time will function differently for each person. For some, having opportunity to sing as a group might be the most important part of worship. And for some of them, the great old hymns of the church are what speak most. For others, Songs from the 60s and 70s, such as those produced by the Gaithers, might be the most important songs they could sing. Now others do not find much meaning in either of those, but need more contemporary music. I do know people in each of these groups. And for still others, maybe music is not so important as sacrament or perhaps hearing the scriptures read, or perhaps our formal prayers. For some, it isn't worship unless we've included the Lord's Prayer. And for others, the Lord's Prayer is just a form. Silent prayer is more important to them. Each of these aspects of our worship services are important to someone. And I seek to do the best I can to keep that variety of needs in mind as I structure our worship experiences. Where then does passion enter the discussion? How is it important that we qualify worship as being passionate? This closer look is important because this term, passion or passionate, will carry different freight for different people. Now what the bishop means in using this word, allow me to quote, Worship should express our devotion, our honor, our love of God. Passionate describes an intense desire, an ardent spirit, strong feelings, the sense of heightened importance. Passionate speaks of an emotional connection that goes beyond intellectual consent. Passionate worship fosters a yearning to authentically honor God with excellence. Worship is not something we should take for granted. And following this pandemic season, I expect, at least for a time, there will be a heightened appreciation of and immersion in our times of gathering as a group in order to worship. Worship is something for which we should prepare. Not just show up and in effect say, lay it on me so we can leave with our emotions lifted and a smile on our face. David Manor recently wrote a short essay uh, back in January of this year titled Four Ways to Really Prepare for Worship. And for this essay, the focus is on internal preparation. That's why some want a quiet time immediately before the service begins. He speaks of pre-arrival preparation. That means spending time even Saturday evening, but definitely Sunday morning, moving our activities and attention toward worship beyond the activities of the regular days of the week. Maybe make it a time of Bible reading and prayer, but definitely avoid some of those things that we do on all other days. Sundays are the Lord's Day remembering and celebrating the resurrection. It is our Sabbath, the seventh day, a day of rest. It should be kept holy. David Manor goes on to suggest that 
worship neither starts when we arrive at the building nor ends when we leave the building. Or in our case here on YouTube, doesn't uh, start when the video begins and doesn't end when the video ends. Worship continues at home, at work, in our recreation, and in our chores. And it is here, perhaps, that our passionate worship during pandemic will be most focused. Before digging a bit deeper into that, let's think a little bit about the scriptures today. The prophet warns us that all of our lives should be lived walking in the way of the Lord, for any other way is death. And the prophet assures us that real repentance and reformation of our hearts and way honors God. This is worship. The lesson from Exodus warns us that we should be a grateful and trusting people, even in difficult times. This is passionate worship. Gratitude. Trust. The Gospel suggests that our lives should be lived in the desire to please our Heavenly Parent. Again, this is passionate worship. And then Paul describes the life that honors God as one that has the mindset of Christ, one that is of humble service instead of grasping at glory and honor. When this is our whole focus, the mind of Christ, that is passionate worship. There are many other texts we could look at in Scripture, speaking of worship. But we have limited time and thus a narrowed focus today. How then do we carry this idea of passionate worship out into our lives during this time of pandemic? Surely it does apply to seeking excellence in the materials that I prepare for you here on YouTube. I seek every week to try to find some way to make the experience better, to help you engage with God and your world more effectively. And you can prepare to participate with these experiences. Even though we cannot assemble physically, we do gather in our Zoom meetings. And when we gather, what do you bring to it? In describing the worship of the early church, the New Testament authors portray it as something to which each one contributes. Maybe there's a song you found to be meaningful. Kathy has been sharing some of those in emails week by week. Maybe a particular scripture passage has come to life in a new way for you during the previous week. Maybe you had a God moment with an experience in nature or in some necessary errand or in some other way. Maybe there's some way in which the rest of the body could be encouraged by you or be an encouragement to you. What do you bring to the Zoom meeting? And then, day by day, the prophets had declared to God's people, God is not so much interested in your noisy songs or prayers or your lavish gifts at the place of worship as God is interested in how you live your life. Do justice, love mercy, walk humbly with God. We have ample opportunity to be working on this in our society today. Doing so wholeheartedly, with a fervent commitment, seeking to be part of a better world for tomorrow, embodying the rule of God in our own life, this is passionate worship. Paul reminded us, God is at work in and among us. We've been saying that though our facilities may be closed, the church is still open open for business, alive and well. God is moving, and part of how God is at work is within us, working in us new hearts and minds, hearts and minds shaped after the likeness of Christ. Not seeking power or recognition, but seeking to be obedient, seeking to be of service, seeking to be useful in the kingdom. As Paul said, live together, animated by the same Spirit, 
and in mutual love, one in heart, animated by one spirit. Nothing should be done out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, lift others up above yourselves, considering not only your own interests, but also the interests of others. Let the Spirit of Christ Jesus be yours also. Next week, we'll be looking at intentional faith development. The Lord spoke through Ezekiel, saying, Cast away from you all the transgressions that you've committed. Get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. And so we confess our sins against God and our neighbor, trusting in God's promise of forgiveness. Let's pray together. Righteous God, we confess that we've not lived as your obedient children. We've honored you with our words, but we've denied you with our actions. We've not pursued the mind of Christ, who took the form of a servant, or we've acted with selfish ambition. We've put our interests before the interests of others, and have not regarded them in humility. Forgive us our arrogance, awaken our hearts to sincere repentance, and enable us to will and to work for your good pleasure, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's take a few moments for silent prayer. Brothers and sisters, God does offer forgiveness for our sins. God offers abundant life to those who repent. People of God, accept God's forgiveness. The Lord is loving, and we are reconciled to God. Therefore, let us humble and surrender ourselves to the will of God for the glory of the Lord. And Jesus gave us these words to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Again, I would like to thank you for your faithfulness in financially supporting the work of our parish. I know these are difficult times, and um, your faithfulness with your financial support of the church is much appreciated. These are not the only ways in which we are faithful, offering our passionate worship as the parable of Jesus offered, working faithfully in the vineyard of the Lord. As United Methodists, we speak of using our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness in our daily lives to further God's kingdom. Prayers, obviously. We pray for those in authority. We pray for our enemies. We pray for those who are experiencing difficulties of various kinds. Prayers, presence showing up where there's a need are we available gifts that's specifically stewardship of our finances and tithes supporting the church are part of that but there's also a variety of other ways maybe maybe you're involved with compassion international or some other charitable cause umcor is currently at work with the storm damage in the south and with the fire damage on the west coast These would be ways of employing our finances to further God's kingdom. Gifts. Service. We we each have a variety of skills and interests that can be employed 
They've been distributed by the Spirit for this very purpose. The body needs those those gifts, those skills, those talents. And then our witness. It's not just our words that speak the gospel. It's our daily lives, our actions. Stewardship. Furthering the work of the kingdom with our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. The works of the Lord are wondrous indeed. With grateful hearts we offer our gifts, trusting in God's goodness. And we pray, O God, use our gifts to do your will in the world and prepare us for your coming kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we go, beloved, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. We will love the Lord and serve others for the glory of God. May the God who is always near bless and keep you on your journey. Glory, honor, and praise be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and always. And we all say, Amen. Rick's at the keyboard again for our postlude. Enjoy. See you at Zoom, 11 o'clock.